Welcome back everybody to another episode of the GC Informer. I am Snowy Lawyers, known as Count Fracula, bringing you probably just a special on one topic. Just though in advance, uh, yeah this has not been, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done a news video. Not going to be doing any, another one again for about two weeks, uh, just because I'm going away. But I will be hopefully be recording an E3 wrap up special pocket edition something with Sully on Sunday. Hopefully going to try and get a couple of pocket editions recorded if we can, just so that we have some nice backup content. Uh, it's just been one of those weeks or one of those, you know, couple of weeks for me. So uh, unfortunately that's that and then I'm going away. So sorry, but you know, content is still around, just not from me. Anyway, let us crack up with uh, with this show. Loot boxes is going to be sort of the main topic of this show, but really it's a sort of a look into uh, the British inquiry into se into several aspects of gaming culture and how it can be damaging to certain demographics of people, such as children and uh, and the vulnerable people who might be, you know, able to be addicted to these kinds of things. And um, it has been time to for the games companies to give evidence and to uh, try and argue their case. It's not gone very well for them. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it's really not gone very well for them. And for me, I kind of think that's a good thing. My personal opinions aside though, uh, Epic Games and EA uh, had both had representatives arguing their side of the story to several MPs in the Commons about this issue and the MPs really did give them a bit of a grilling, I'm not going to lie, they, uh, they kind of ripped them a new one and uh, both EA and Epic Games, Epic Games in particular in this instance, did not come off looking very good. I will uh, read you some choice excerpts from the uh, from this whole thing about or oh, about just how lovely Epic Games are and how much they uh, really, really like you guys, honestly. But I'm going to start with the funny thing though. Uh, EA. <laughs> um, so EA have decided that uh, they don't use the word loot boxes anymore. I mean, they do, but in... <laughs> Just listen to this quote. We don't call them loot boxes, we call them surprise mechanics. This is from uh, Kerry Hopkins of uh, EA, uh, who apparently has no problems with the loot boxes being used. Oh boy. Uh, and that was her justification, she compared them to Kinder Eggs. They're really not the same as Kinder Eggs, I'm not gonna lie. Because, you know, once you buy something in a Kinder Egg, you have a physical thing there that you can either keep or get rid of or whatever. If you get something out of a loot box, 90% of the time in these games you can't transfer them in any way, you're just fucking stuck with them, or it transfer translates them into a tiny amount of the digital currency. Or, even if you can trade them, it'll only really hold, hold any value for as long as the server is active. It has no monetary value outside of the game either particularly, but once the servers for that game go down, then any money you have spent on this item has then been effectively wasted because you don't, you basically don't own it anymore, you just own you know, the game that it was on, but the servers that hold those items don't exist anymore, so neither do your items. Whereas, unless you physically destroy something from a Kinder Egg, you will still have that thing, which still holds monetary value. A tiny amount of monetary value, but some monetary value outside of, you know, it existing. So, it's not the same as a Kinder Egg. It really isn't. Apparently though, she justified any consequences of, of loot boxes being bad by saying, Bad guys find ways to do bad things. Nice. Epic Games though also outright admitted that they do no age verification checks in any way, shape or form. Uh, which is a terrible thing to admit because you're admitting that you are not doing the basic checks that should be required of you. 
Fortnite is an age-gated game. Technically, I believe it's a 12 in most territories or whatever the similar thing is. And they're outright admitting that they are not checking that people are old enough to be playing their game because this isn't like a game you buy in a store where it has a clear... Where, like, if you, a 12-year-old goes in to buy an 18-rated game, they'll be turned away because this the person behind the till can see they're not 18. But in the instance of Fortnite, you're just downloading it off a store and there's not really any age verification checks. So they're not checking these things. And this is going to be hyperbolic slightly, but there's no checks to see... If they're not checking the ages, they're also not checking the chats to see if there's any, you know, possible issues there. They've also outright admitted that they don't have any sort of moderation on the chats to avoid any potential things like child grooming. They've got no moderation, no auto mods, nothing like that. And that's kind of concerning to me, to be honest. There's not, not even a bot moderating those chats. That's not, not the best image. When asked about things like playtime, uh, overall game playtime, this is one of the things that they're being investigating uh, is to do with playtime and whether or not excessive playtime of games can damage uh, the health or the mental well-being of people, particularly children. Most of this stuff is particularly aimed at children, but it, it's a sort of umbrella term anyway, you know. Excessive playtime of, of gamings in general can be a bit damaging to a person depending on you know their situation and what they're trying to do if they're trying to hold down a job but they can't because they're playing a bunch of games constantly because they're addicted that wouldn't be great i suspect that's not really a thing that happens in like incredibly rarely but it's the, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be wary about nevertheless they were very just evasive about uh, most of the stuff has been evasive but this was particularly evasive uh, they wouldn't even attempt to describe or define what meant too much playtime uh, because if they did that would, be, that would be seen as them going oh no don't play our game for more than x number of hours at a time whereas in reality they really want to be going play our game constantly give us money give us all the money so they i understand where they're coming from where they don't want to be telling like giving a number to that but they kind of not helping themselves by not giving a number being evasive and they also when asked about player time like average playtime stats things like that they epic games in particular refuse to give over that information saying that it's a it's a corporate secret it's not really a corporate secret like you're there's there's no sort of thing that's going to be negatively impacted in terms of like corporate secrets when if you reveal playtime but whatever um, things like this though really did not go down well with the uh, with the commons committee though with uh oh with uh mr collins i cannot remember this guy's first name because i forgot to check damien collins the command the chair committee committee chair uh, had this to say along that after that particularly evasive line of questioning. What I struggle with here, Fortnite is a game which makes money out of people playing it. It's a hugely successful play successful game played by millions of people around the world and this is this is sort of basic information. Uh, we know from other game companies we've spoken to is something that would be gathered and analysed all the time so I don't believe that you do not know this information. So for me, it arouses suspicion that this is not something we can discuss. This is basic information. We don't need to know your corporate secrets, but I'm sure you've got an idea what the answers to these questions are. Really seem to be getting quite frustrated with uh, with with Epic Games there, and well, particularly Epic Games because they're the ones that are being slightly more evasive in this instance. But I can completely understand where he's coming from if he's asking questions, particularly ones that you really ought to have an answer to. Yeah, come on. If you're trying to argue your case, at least answer the questions you're being asked. That's, that's the best way to do it, surely. There was a point as well, I'm just going to bring this up, where uh, the Epic Games representative called Canon Pence. That's a great name, Canon Pence. Well, it might be an attorney firm. Anyway, uh, claimed that it was inaccurate to describe Epic Games as a company who makes money out of 
people playing their games. But they are. That, that. Hmm. Hmm. To which Mr. Collins responded quite correctly, you're not a charity. If you're not that, if you're not making money off of selling your games, what are you making money from? Because you're not, you really aren't a charity, you are making your money from somewhere, and you're a games publisher. What else is it going to be, guys? When asked about uh, a duty of care towards, uh, towards the players, especially when it came to children, and uh, people who you know, might be addicted, especially when the World Health Organization announced this thing called gaming disorder, when people can get addicted to games and it affects their life. Uh, basically, they kind of brushed it off, saying that uh, we're not in a position of knowledge to speak about it. We rely on our trade organizations to do that. And uh, Collins responded with this rather apt answer. But you shouldn't. You should have responsibility for your own company and your own customers. That is not what the trade body is there for. They may lobby for you, but they are the ones that have responsibility. These are your users and your company. You could disregard what the World Health Organization has said and seems to be that, you're, that's, that that's your position. But going back on what other members are asking about duty of care, would it not be responsible for a company to actually consider the guidance given by the World Health Organization and therefore consider if they have a duty of care to their users and to consider whether some of those users may fall into this definition of being gaming disordered. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't see how it is the responsibility of anyone other than a particular gaming company to monitor their game and assess the potential negative impacts of their own game. It's not down to anyone else, it should be down to the company to evaluate its individual products on what might, on these potential issues. It, it, it seems odd to me that the trade body, it's a, the trade body is a lobbying institution, that it should not be down to them to monitor this kind of thing, it should be down to the individual company in my personal opinion. So I definitely agree with what uh, Mr. Collins is saying there. So. Overall though, let's just kind of wrap this up into a neat little bow. After all of this, it's really not gone very well in terms of uh, EA and Epic Games presenting their argument, but this inquiry is certainly not, uh, not finished by a long shot. In fact, next week we will have representatives from King, UKIE and TIGA to be giving evidence. The King one in particular, I am morbidly looking forward to because that is going to be a bit of a shit show in my personal opinion and several of the MPs who were part of this committee after this whole debacle uh, tweeted their frustration at, uh, at Epic Games for their continuous dodging and evasion of the questions, pretty basic questions in some instances. Uh, but let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below if you think that uh, the British government are barking up the wrong tree when it comes to uh, things like gaming disorder and uh, who should be responsible in regards to uh, making things fair or if loot boxes are gambling or not. Or do you think that uh, do you think that Epic Games and EA are talking shit? Do you think they're right? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. But that will uh, that'll be a nice point to wrap up the show. That'll bring us to the end of this episode of the GC Informer, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and share whatever you fancy. And our social links are in the description. Stay tuned to Gamecast, though. We have news, reviews, podcasts, lots of great, great gaming content. Hopefully, we'll be getting some more up soon, because we've just had a bit of a, bit of a time where life has got to us all, but uh, hopefully, we'll be back on the wagon soon enough. But thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you next time for something else.